In the last video, I posed a question that I hope you've had a little time to think about. Is it possible to have a function that's defined everywhere, but at no point has a limit? The functions we draw are usually pretty predictable, at least in chunks. This function here has lots of weird places, but it's made up of understandable chunks. For instance, here at x equals 2, the limit of the function is equal to 1, and indeed the function itself is equal to 1. So in that little chunk, it's predictable. It's pretty likely that you've never seen a function of the kind I'm asking about, a function where no point has a limit. I'm here to tell you that they do in fact exist, but you rarely see them, in part because they're really hard to draw. I'm going to show you an example of a function with no limit anywhere, but the graph I'm going to draw for you is going to be sort of woefully inadequate. I'll be able to plot some points, but I won't be able to plot them all. The function is called the Dirichlet function, and you can read about it on Wikipedia. The only thing to be a little careful of is that in Wikipedia, they talk about these epsilons and deltas. That's because they're using the actual rigorous definition of a limit, which is something we shy away from in this course. Here's the definition of the Dirichlet function. If a number is rational, it maps to zero. And if it's irrational, it maps to one. That's it, that's the whole description. Remember, a rational number is a number that can be expressed as a fraction of wholes, or equivalently, as a finite or repeating decimal. And an irrational number can be expressed as an infinitely long non-repeating decimal. So let's try to imagine what this function looks like. All the whole numbers, one, two, three, these are rational, so the function is zero there. Also, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, all these numbers map to zero. What about the irrational numbers? We don't see these as often in our daily lives, but we can find them pretty much wherever we look. We know about pi, so let's use that to start. Pi is irrational, so f of pi is equal to 1. Pi over 2 is irrational, as is pi over 4, so they also map to 1. Likewise, pi over 30, 2 pi over 30, 3 pi over 30, and so on. Now let's think about what happens when you try to take the limit of this function at a point. Let's look at the limit as x goes to 2, but it really doesn't matter where we look. Everything looks pretty much the same. As x gets closer and closer to 2, the function keeps jumping around between 0 and 1. If I try to follow the rational numbers in, the function looks like it's always 0. If I try to follow the irrational numbers closer and closer to x equals 2, the function looks like it's always 1. There's something really quite fundamental going on that leads us to not having a limit of this function as x approaches 2. And the fundamental thing is that no matter how close I get to 2, no matter how closely I zoom in, I'm never going to only see rational numbers. As I get closer and closer to 2, I keep finding more and more irrational numbers. Uh, this is called being dense, and it's a, it's a very fundamental and fascinating property of the rational and irrational numbers and how they fit together in the reals. Uh, and in particular, uh, bringing it back to the fact that we're in calculus and we're learning about limits, this means that there is no limit of this function as x approaches 2. And this is the same everywhere on the real numbers. For whatever number I choose, as x approaches this number, this function does not have a limit. 